Okay, hello, hello, hello. Um, awesome to have you guys in. Uh, unfortunately, we're having a couple of issues with YouTube this evening. So um, YouTube, if those of you catching this on YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, this, is, this may well be a little bit delayed. Um, so apologies for that. Um, but yeah, so uh, for those of you that are catching this on Facebook, let me just check that you guys can all hear me and see me and feel me and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, if you just give me a quick message in the chat box, just so I can make sure uh, that you guys are catching what I'm saying, that would be awesome, please. Um, so uh, I now await, uh, obviously it takes a minute for all of this stuff to go through. Uh, so there's a little bit of a lag and a little bit of a delay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll give you guys just a second. Um, we've got a really exciting session this, this evening. I'm genuinely very, very excited to be working with you guys as per usual. Um, and we've got a little bit of technology helping us this time. Uh, awesome. Hey, Colin. Awesome to have you in, buddy. Thank you very much for um, giving us a comment uh, and letting us know that you can hear. So it means that I'm not talking to myself, which is always a nice benefit. Um, to be able to talk to other people. Now, we're actually trying to do a couple of bits uh, technology-wise um, to make this a little bit cooler. Uh, so you guys should be able to see my stream uh, up here in the background. Um, uh, awesome. Thank you, Clive and Andy. Awesome to have you guys in. But yeah, you, So you guys should be able to see a little bit of what I'm doing. Uh, I've got my iPad, handy iPad, so I can do some notes as to what we're doing as well. Uh, and I've also got my notes on what we're going to be covering this evening. So just to let you guys know, um, part of this evening's session, uh, which I'm really looking forward to, is we're going to help you to be able to earn the best returns that you possibly can from your property by getting the best value refinance. Okay, So getting as much money as possible from a refinance uh, on any investment property that you currently have. Um, so very, very exciting stream. So um, uh, out of interest, let me check in. Uh, for those of you that are currently on the stream and viewing, uh, who'd like to be able to earn more money from your property investments? Uh, i.e. get more money back and therefore earn more cash flow for your money invested. Who'd like to do a little bit of that? Um, give me a yes or a one in the chat box. So give me a one in the chat box. That'll be awesome. Okay, um, and I'll wait for you guys to come through on that as well. So um, it's important to be able to get as much money from your investment properties as possible. But before we go into that, uh, I, I just want to check in uh, more for my own curiosity than anything else. Uh, who's on the stream because you'd like to build a property portfolio? Okay, um, hey Imogen, awesome to have you on as well. Thank you very much for joining, super duper cool. Okay, excellent, so we've got some of the ones now coming through, so uh, there's a little bit of a delay, <laughs> which is interesting, but awesome to have you guys through. So yeah, so who's on the, st on the stream because you'd like to be able to build a property portfolio? Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, and who's on the stream because you'd like to become financially free? If that's you, give me a me in the chat box. Um, just wanna sort of check in, okay? You know, make sure that you guys are checking into the same stream and the right stream, um, it'd be super cool. Okay, um, fantastic. So for those of you that have said yes and me, I can promise you, you are in the right place. So if you're okay with me taking the next half an hour or so um, on this stream this evening to be able to help you to be able to do exactly that, then that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, as I say, unfortunately, uh, we're having some issues with YouTube. Uh, I'm going to continue trying YouTube in the background while we're going because um, I, would, uh, I would love to be able to get that done. We've got a couple of people on there going, hey, look, I'm struggling to get through on YouTube. Um, so uh, excuse me while I also do this in the background while having a conversation with you guys. So as part of what we're doing this evening, okay, as part of what we're doing this evening, we're going to be um, working with you guys uh, on a couple of points. Okay, first and foremost, uh, how you can buy, refurbish, and refinance properties. So we're going to go through the buy, refurbish, refinance process. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to explain what I mean by DUV. Okay. The term is done up value, so I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by DUV and also MLI, okay, MLI, which is money left in, okay, money left in. So we're going to go through a little bit of that. Then I'm going to go through something called property dressing and how you can make sure you get the most value from your property by dressing it up nice and beautiful and making it all attractive. So that'll be the next thing that we're going to be covering. Uh, and then last but not least, okay, we're also going to be going through the revaluation document and a couple of cheeky little tricks to be able to get the best value from your investment property. So it should be a very cool session. Um, out of interest, uh, who currently owns property? If you currently own property, give me a yes in the chat, um, just so I know who we got on here. Um, it'll be uh, useful to sort of hear from you guys. Okay, um, And if that's you, just give me a yes in the chat. Uh, I'm very curious to hear. Um, okay, so YouTube is still proving a little bit of a pain this evening. Uh, unfortunately, I might have to give up on it. Uh, and for those of you that are catching us on YouTube, I'm really sorry. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to upload this and do it the old school way because uh, technology has once again uh, eluded us with its brilliance. Okay, 
Um, awesome. But yes, thank you very much for, for all the comments, guys. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, right, so let me digress. So um, as you guys know, the way we typically run these streams is we do a little bit of content, a little bit of information, um, and we try and pack as much as we can in. Then we give you guys some exercises so you can go away uh, at home and actually be able to do those. So um, I'm going to kick off with firstly the buy, refurbish, and refinance model. Okay, now essentially how this whole model works, um, let me just get kick started on our iPad. Uh, if I'm standing in the way, please let me know. I'm more than happy to move out the way so you guys can actually see the screen. Okay, but essentially what you end up doing is you first of all start off with a house. And it, the house is typically a smelly house. Okay, a smelly house. All right. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen. All right, for you guys, um, looks like it might be a little bit. Uh, there we go. Yes, you can see it. Absolutely perfect. Okay, um, if you're struggling to see anything that I'm doing, please let me know. I'm more than happy to move stuff around. Okay, but you start with a smelly house. And then what you do with the smelly house, okay, is you refurbish it. Okay, and what you do by doing that, okay, what you do by doing that is you increase the value of the property. Okay, you increase the value of the property. Now, to be able to increase the value of the property, that means by definition, at this point, when you first bought it, you would have had to have bought it for a discount. Okay, so you buy a, refurbished pro or a refurbishable property, a property in tired condition. For a discount, you refurbish it, and then you end up being able to get a property of a higher value. Now, when it's a higher value, this is where it starts to get interesting. Okay, because when it's a higher value, this is when you then take this to the bank. Okay, and you do something called a refinance. Okay, a refinance. And this is where the bank will lend you a percentage which is typically 75% on your investment property. And that 75% okay, goes back to you. Now, so this is the, the whole model as to how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this uh, in terms of how we can do this with numbers. So I'm just going to rub everything out here um, that you see. If there's something that you wish I'd kept, I'm really sorry. Uh, feel free to watch the stream again. I'm sure you can uh, pick it all up again. Okay, But if we look at this from a logical standpoint, so you find the very same okay, smelly house and there's a purchase price in this house and you manage to negotiate a sweet little purchase price of 60,000 pounds. Okay, you negotiate the sweet little purchase price of 60K. Okay, are we all happy with this? Okay, that you can negotiate the purchase price for 60K, nice and simple. Are we all happy with this? Let me just check in with you guys. Now, the first question is, uh, and I often get this, yeah, but where am I going to get 60K? My problem is money. And I hear this all the time. The first question is, does this have to be your money? Okay. Does that have to be your money? And the answer is no. It does not have to be your money. Okay. This could be an investor's money. This could partially be a bank's money. Okay. This could be money from anywhere. But the fact is, 60K is 60K. Irrespective of where that money comes from, 60k is 60k okay nice and simple now uh, please understand that i'm not going to go through to a granular level with all the numbers because we don't have time on the stream i'm going to go through um so you guys can understand the principles when you get the principles everything else makes sense and it becomes a lot easier okay so the refurbishment on this house we're going to say is 20k okay 20k so as you saw with the previous bit 20k means that you refurbish the property the value then goes up okay nice and simple okay and then you get something called the DUV. Okay, oh, actually, I'm a little bit premature on this. So now you're going to have other costs because, of course, you've got cost of lending, cost of stamp duty, um, cost of legal fees, all that good stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say other costs equate to 5K. 5K. Now, how much have you invested at this point, guys? Okay, how much have you invested at this point? Okay, 60K plus 20K plus 5K. And obviously, yes, that's right, it's 85K. That's the answer, 85K. Nice and simple. Now, because you've done such a smashing job on the refurb, the bank has come out, they've looked at the house, and they've said, you've done a brilliant job, the value of the house has gone up, and it is now worth 100K, 100,000 pounds. Super simple, right, 100K. And the mortgage that they're willing to give you on this house is 75%, exactly as we showed earlier, which in this instance equates to 75K. Now, if you take a look, 
you've invested 85k the bank's just giving you back 75k which means how much money do you have invested in the house okay and that's the million dollar question right how much money do you have invested in the house and the answer very simply um, if I get out the way so you guys can see it okay I'm pretty sure I've probably gone the wrong way um, is 10k okay 10k that's what you got left in the house 10k now this is where it's really interesting right because we've got a couple of figures in here that it's worth you understanding what they are so the first figure over here okay the value of the property now that it's been refurbished is called the D U V okay D U V that stands for done up value okay done up value the D U V the done up value okay and then the second figure worth noting is this figure over here which is called the M L I if I get out the way properly so you guys can see it okay M L I basically means money left in okay and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll this up a little bit so you guys can actually see that over and above me. All right. Uh, let me just make sure I'm at the bottom of the... Okay. Cool. Very, very cool. Okay. So the two things... Okay. Th so this is the... Basically, this here is the buy, refurbish, refi... Oh, sorry. Buy, refurbish, refinance model. Okay. Buy, refurbish, refinance. The whole premise of this model is that it enables you to be able to spend less money to buy the same houses. Okay, less money to be able to buy the same houses. So instead of doing what the average person would do, where they'd buy this house, so the average person okay, would find said house in good condition, worth 100K, the bank would give them 75K, and their deposit and investment, oh sorry, then they, so hang on a sec. So the value, the mortgage, other costs and deposit, Okay, so other costs would still be 5K. Deposit, in this case, would be 25K. So you would typically end up spending 30K to buy this house. Okay, 30K, 30 £30,000 to buy this house. This would be the average investor's approach. Whereas the approach that we're taking here is buying for a discount, refurbishing, and refinancing means that for the very same house, instead of spending £30,000 on the house, you only spent 10 to 15 Okay, so it costs you a lot less money to be able to buy the same house, which basically means you can buy more houses with the same money. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So if you start with a pot of 60,000, okay, on the old school model, the old school model, the model that you see over here, okay, so it'd be 60K divided by 30K means you could only buy two houses. Whereas if you use this model here and you have 60K, divided by 10k means you could buy six houses okay and that's the whole premise of what we're doing here is that enables you to build a portfolio a little bit better a little bit faster and also a lot larger with exactly the same pots of money okay so that's the first thing um the second thing i wanted to cover is obviously the duv and L mli so as we mentioned over here duv stands for done okay and it's it's important that you understand what these are because these will come up in your investing journey. Okay, so DUV is done up value. And sorry about the terrible handwriting. Um, I always, uh, uh, well, I'm an engineer. I always wanted to be a doctor. So uh, it's a line my mother told me to use when I was a kid. So <laughs> the teachers didn't like it very much. Okay, and the other one is MLI, which stands for money left invested okay money left invested okay so these are two of the important figures that it's worth you understanding okay now we're going to start to go through the importance of what we're talking about on today's session so now you understand the concept of trying to make sure you can maximize your money by leaving as little money in as possible now imagine there was a way where instead of getting a hundred thousand valuation on the house you did some extra stuff and the valuer came in and gave you a valuation of 105k okay 105k so although it's only five thousand pounds understand one thing you get lending of 75 percent against that which means instead of getting 75k you'll get 78.5k i believe that's correct or near as damn it okay which means 
this figure down here on the bottom left also becomes 78.5k which means your money left in instead of being 10k has now become 6.5k now if you do exactly the same numbers here and you go okay so we've got a 60k starting pot but it costs us 6.5k per deal that means you can get approximately eight or nine deals i don't know the exact math at the top of my head but you can end up getting between eight or nine deals now that's what the whole gig's all about right that's what the whole session's all about is how can you be able to do that so you get a better duv which will mean that you can release more equity from the house which means you have a smaller amount of money left in which means you can buy more houses okay that's what the whole gig's all about um, is, uh, does this make sense to you guys? Are you all are you all following me as to where we're at, and we're all okay with what's going on? Um, I have to ask this question because I've I've gone through a lot of numbers and a lot of concepts really quickly, but it's very cool and very exciting stuff. So I mean, hopefully you guys are getting some value and go, okay, cool, I get what's going on. Okay, now um, there's a couple of bits that I want to sort of enlighten you guys on. So I'm just going to leave this up in the background, okay, just so you guys have this there. Okay, there's a couple of bits that I want to sort of enlighten you guys on, which I think is very cool, and it will help you to be able to maximize your end value of the property, which will also help you to be able to get the best money back. Okay, so the first thing is something called property dressing. Okay, property dressing. Now, this is not where you put a dress on a house. Let me be clear. Okay, it is not a dress on a house. Okay, property dressing, you are basically, um, you are taking a house that is in need of refurbishment, refurbishing the house, and then at the end, putting some furniture in, putting some pictures up, putting some throws on for the windows, some you know, uh, throws on at the bottom of the bed with some colored pillows, something that will increase the um, appearance of the value of the property. Okay, now please understand, for a standard buy-to-let, this wouldn't be normal to do. Okay, but when it comes to the larger properties, HMOs, or even something called a flip, where you're selling the property, so you buy it, refurbish it, and sell it, okay, these are tend to be where you make the biggest impact on what you're doing. But you can still do this with buy to lets, but just bear in mind, you want to look at the cost of doing it against actually doing it. If you're doing it yourself, A-okay. If you're paying somebody else to do it, then the cost might be outweighed with the by the likelihood of being able to get a little bit more extra money back in. And you don't you don't want to be losing money. That's not the whole purpose. Okay. So um, if you're in doubt, if you want to see some pictures, feel free to go onto the katanagroup.co.uk website. Uh, we've actually got a whole bunch of photos in there. I think it's under the success stories section at the minute. Uh, we're rebuilding the whole website and stuff very soon. Uh, so by the time you watch this, you might not have that, but hopefully it's still on the website somewhere. Um, but yeah, you've got a success story section. Just click on any of the pictures and it'll bring up an array of the photos or images for some of the properties that we've done uh, over the past few years. Okay, um, so that is number one. That is property dressing, and that's a big deal. I love property dressing. It makes a huge difference, okay, especially when it comes to selling because when somebody wants to buy, having photos of a house that looks very beautiful and pristine with furniture in allows them to create perspective and understanding of what the house looks like and makes it significantly easier and more likely for you to be able to sell it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, now, the second thing, which is very interesting, is when it comes to refinancing the property. Okay, um, out of interest, uh, who's on the stream has bought a property for a discount, refurbished it, and is refinancing or has refinanced it before, or is due to refinance it? Um, out of interest, who's, who's on the stream with that uh, being you? Okay, please give us a yes in the chat box if that is you. Um, obviously, we've got quite a few people on, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, so give us a yes in the chat box. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, it'll be through in a second. <laughs> um, it's bizarre with the delay. Um, so yeah, so uh, if you can do that, that would be awesome. And what, what I'm going to teach you, if you haven't already done this, excellent, so we've got com some coming through. So if you haven't already done this, this will form as a huge thing, okay, in your property investing journey. So um, there's something called the refinance document. So this is something we actually work with our mentorship students to put together. Um, and uh, yes, about the refinance. Awesome. Thank you, Imogen. Thank you, all of you guys that are busy posting, which is fantastic. Uh, so something called the refinance document. Now this refinance document is basically a document you put together and you are going to give to the valuer who comes to revalue your property for the refinance. Okay, now I'm gonna explain some of the stuff that you wanna have in there. Okay, and it's, it's very cool stuff, just so you know. Um, and it's, uh, the whole premise is, although some valuers will absolutely love it, some valuers won't. 
Okay, but the whole premise is there's a few things you want to have in there which make it make sense. Okay, so the first thing that you want to have in there is obviously you want to have the property details. Okay, as your front page. And you want to keep this fairly short and sweet and simple because, of course, understand that he is going to be looking at this for himself. Okay, and if you make it too long, he's not going to be interested in reading it. All right, so that's the first thing. So you want to have the property details. That is number one. Okay, the second thing that you're going to want to have in there, okay, is your expected value. So how much you are expecting the house to be worth. Now, my suggestion here, my suggestion, and it's a big suggestion, is add 10%. Okay, uh, add 10%. Helps for actually write percent. So if you think it'll be worth 100,000, say 110. If you think it'll be worth 200,000, say 220. Okay, whatever you think it'll be, add the 10% because he is unlikely to give you more than you ask for, but he's likely to give you less than you ask for. Okay, so if you ask for more than you're expecting, then you know there's a reasonable chance that he might actually give that to you, which is very cool and very useful. Okay, so that's the second thing you want in there. Third thing you want in there is pre-works photos. Okay, so pre-works, photos. So he can see what the house looked like when you bought it, so he can understand why you managed to buy it for such a big discount. You want these photos to look as bad as possible, let me be clear. Okay, the worse they look, the better. Okay, so pre-works, photos. The number four is you want your refurbishment quote. Okay, your refurb or refurbishment quote. If you can, get the builder to buff up the quote for the document. It's okay, okay? Um, if you didn't pay that in the end, it's okay. But the point is what it does is it justifies the increase in value you're looking for. Okay, so this is another big one. So your refurbishment quote. The number five, if you can, put in a tenancy agreement. Okay, tenancy agreement. Which then shows that the property is rented out and that you can rent it and you've got demand and all of that sort of good stuff because that makes them much more comfortable with the whole dialogue around this, okay? They, then they go, okay, yeah, yeah, we know it can rent because there's tenants in there, it's all good. We got a tenancy agreement, it's all good, okay? Then number six, okay, this is your supporting evidence. Oh. Okay, supporting evidence. And it's the supporting evidence for the valuation. So typically what I do as supporting evidence is I'll get an automated online valuation, a full document. So right now there's something called home track with a T. Okay, and I'll put it into brackets here. Home track. Okay, home track. Um, and home track are typically um, an automated valuation tool that'll be able to assist you. Now we're actually in the midst of creating our own automated valuation tool, which will be much more accurate. Um, uh, so I'll come to your question in a second. Andy, I love the question, by the way. Um, so we're creating another valuation tool called TrueVals that'll be ready probably in the next um, one to two months uh, where you can actually get much more accurate valuation reports, but there's a whole different co conversation around that. Um, I got a question from Andy. Say, how much do you want to buff up the refurb quote? So 10% okay, is pretty decent, depending on how much the refurb quote is. If it's only a 5K refurb, okay, add another 5K. So instead of 10%, actually, what might be easier to say is 5K to 10K. Okay, that would be my best suggestion because that buffs it up enough, but it isn't ridiculous where they go, holy shit, there's no way you've done this amount of work for that kind of money. All right, and then finally, finally, just have your contact details in there. Okay, that's it. Like That's the entire document. Now, I'm going to move around a little bit so you can see what I'm writing because obviously, unfortunately, it's not on the screen um, beautifully because I'm standing in the way. <laughs> okay, but um, that's the final thing that you want in it. You want your contact details. Now, when you are going to give this to him, okay, you're going to be speaking to the estate agent and saying, hey, look, can you let me know when the valuer books in for so I can meet him at the property? 
and you want to go and meet the valuer at the property and be like, hey, look, it's Richard. Um, it's my house. I thought I'd come and meet you in person um, just to see if you've got any questions, anything I can help with. You want to build a relationship with them. Okay, you want them to like you because that's the easiest way to help. Um, so your comparables will be as part of your supporting information, Colin. Um, yes, 100%. So um, your comparables will all form part of your supporting information. So that's why I like the valuation report because that gives the information. Um, but yeah, it, so that all forms part of your supporting information. Um, but yeah, really good question. Sorry I wasn't clear. Okay, good stuff. Right, so that is your revaluation document. Now, um, in terms of a couple of cheeky little tricks, okay, now this is, this is some of the good stuff. So this is one little cheeky trick that I think will stand you very well, and it's worth having a bit of an understanding for. So when you speak to your broker, find out which lending product you're probably going to use for your refinance. Now, understand that typically when you buy an investment property, you have to own it for six months before you can start the refinance process. Typically, not always. Some lenders, they don't care. They're like, whatever, do it whenever you want. Okay, but typically you're going to have around a six month window before you can start the refinance process. What you can do is about month four is you can say to the broker, okay, who's the best lender? Find out who the lender is going to be. Okay, and whoever the lender is going to be that you're going to be looking to refinance onto, find out which the, the mortgage valuation company is that they use. Okay, a valuation company, Rick's valuation company. Find out who they are, get in touch with that company, say, hey, look, I've just bought a house. I'm looking to refinance it shortly, um, but um, out of interest, I'd love to just get a valuation. Could you guys give me a valuation um, just as supporting evidence for what I'm doing, please? Okay, and you, you request that that company does it. Now, this is where it's a little bit cheeky because if that company actually goes out and does it, it will be difficult for them to give a different valuation based on lenders terms. You guys understand mortgage lenders have different lenders terms when it comes to their mortgage valuations. Okay, so um, those terms, they might say, well, we want to be including this and we want to remove that and you know, we only want a 95% value, whatever tweaks they do, okay, to be able to get a lower valuation to make it less risk for them. Understand that what you're doing is you are shortcutting that process because it'll be difficult for somebody from the same valuation company or even the same valuer to give two different valuations within a one to two month period. Okay, so you're being a little bit cheeky, but it's really, really cool. So something certainly worth considering. Um, right, sorry, one second, my laptop's about to die. Okay, there we go. Um, right, so, um, I mean, that's basically everything I wanted to cover. Uh, if you guys have any questions, now is the perfect time for you to drop it into the chat box. Uh, I will make sure I answer any and every question that you guys put down. Uh, if you're catching this as a recording and you have some questions, just post your question into the chat box. Someone from the team is always busy monitoring, um, and it's either me or somebody else. I've got alerts kicking through, so I'm more than happy to assist and answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, but in the meantime, please ask any questions that you want uh, in the chat. Um, and if you found this useful, uh, please do me a favor. Can you please hit like? Uh, please share the stream. Please get this out to your friends and family uh, so that we can continue to grow the stream. It's, it's awesome fun what we're doing here, uh, and we really do um, help uh, other property investors in their property journeys. Okay, how do you find the valuer's details? Interestingly enough, the mortgage broker more often than not knows, or you can take a look online. Okay, mortgage brokers often have that details, uh, those details for you, Andy. Uh, really good question. Okay, if you just say to them, hey, look, um, out of interest, who's the valuation company that they use? If they don't know, um, then you can just take a look online. You'll often find that information. Or you could just, you know, seek a call of them and say, hey, um, out of interest, what valuation company do you guys use? There's a, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. Um, but normally the mortgage value will, will know. Or sorry, the mortgage broker will know. Really good question. Okay. Any other questions you have, please post them in so we've got a little bit more time to go. Um, I, I wanted to give you guys some exercises. I always like to give exercises off the back of every stream because I want you guys to be able to go away and have something to do at home to be able to implement some of the stuff that we're teaching. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you guys three exercises. I love to give three exercises. It's just a good number, um, and it's something you guys can get done ahead of the next um, session. Uh, out of an interest, um, who's been doing the exercises from the previous sessions that you guys have been catching up on? Uh, obviously, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces, and please do... Um, keep the chats going, the comments going in the in the um, comments box. Uh, if you're watching this, please do give us a like. Please do share. Uh, it really helps the stream grow. Uh, but the three exercises that I'm going to give you guys today, ready for next week's session, uh, is first I want you to create your own revaluation document, template. Okay, so just put one together with a bit of a template. 
Okay, um, very, very, very cool. So get that done, get that all set up. So when you're investing, you have that as a template ready to go. Now, please understand it doesn't have to be look like the best document in the world. Don't get dragged down by analysis paralysis or perfection bullshit. I, it just has to look decent and have the supporting information. Okay, and run a test to see how it goes. Um, the second exercise is I want you to actually try and find out uh, who a lender is. Just pick a, a mortgage lender and try and find out which valuation company they're going to use within your area. Okay, or within the investment area you're looking at or wherever that suits you. But try and find those details out. Okay, and you'll typically find it's much easier than you think, especially if you're speaking to a mortgage broker. Okay, and the third and final thing is I want you to create a dressing kit list. Okay, a dressing kit list. So just scroll out all the things that you would like to have in a dressing kit that you think would be nice and simple. And I'll give you the first one. I'll give you a really good clue or a really good tip is instead of getting um, curtains, okay, you get fabric. Okay, and you make sure the fabric is nice and long and you get some pins. And then what you do is you pin the curtains up onto the wooden beam across the top of the window. So you pin it out and then you have something that ties it together on either side and it makes it look like it's got curtains in the photo. Okay, every good video editor or um, image editor will be able to make it look a little bit better and get rid of anything that you don't want to see. But that's a really good way to give you the impression of curtains. And it's very, very inexpensive. Now, if you can get um, where it's different colors on either side of the material, that makes it even easier. Okay, because then you've got curtains where you can flip around. Likewise with the throw across the bed. See if you can have it so it is different colors. Even the pillows. Okay, you have like the scatter cushions. Okay, try and have a couple of different colors. So you have different colors for different rooms. Only two, don't go crazy. Okay, um, and then just try and put together the rest of the list yourself. Now we've got a couple more questions. Uh, what's the average money you leave in a deal? So really good question there from Kathy. Um, so a typical buy to let in the north of England, okay, in the north of England is you're gonna be buying properties um, for in and around the 40 to 60,000 mark. It's gonna value up between the 80 to 100,000 mark, pretty standard. Okay, and this can vary a little bit. Now, the typical money you're going to be leaving in a deal right now is somewhere around 10 to 15,000. That's a very standard figure. Sometimes it ekes a little bit above depending on the cost of your lending, but 10 to 15,000 is a pretty standard investment amount. Uh, now, if you feel like you can pull together 10 to 15,000 to be able to build your portfolio and buy your first investment property, you need to get yourself along to one of our trainings where we can show you exactly how to do that effectively. Right, um, and on that note, um, just so you guys are aware, we're actually running a property seminar this weekend absolutely for free, okay? And this isn't a sales pitch because it's a free seminar. It's a, it's a full three days training where we're gonna go through all of this. We're gonna deep dive into this. Uh, we're also gonna look at um, how you can find your investment area, selecting the right strategy for you, um, finding property deals, being able to raise finance, which is a big deal. We go through 20, 20 different ways to be able to raise finance, um, analyzing deals, costing up refurbishments, managing bull teams, um, putting together your power team, which is your accountants, listers, brokers, etc., cetera, um, and then deal progression, which is your step-by-step -step on everything you need to do throughout the entire process. Uh, so we're going to be running that in our next three-day event, which is literally running this weekend. Uh, if it's something you're interested in, all you have to do, I believe one of the team, uh, Kathy is probably going to drop a link uh, in the bottom. So all you got to do is click on that link, okay, and then you can get yourself registered absolutely for free. Um, it'll be Friday, Saturday, Sunday runs 10 till 4-ish. Okay, so we've got another question here from Imogen. Uh, do I need to do a new home track report now, even though I already um, done one before I bought the house? Um, most certainly not, okay? So um, you always wanna do the home track report or whatever valuation tool report before the house is purchased. Because as soon as you buy the house, you've bought it for a discount, which means that it's going to appear to be less valuable on the report and therefore not be good supporting evidence for what you're doing and how you're trying to justify the value. I, I hope that makes sense. Um, if unfortunately you have bought the house and you haven't done a home track report, instead of doing a home track report, use a um, supporting evidence from looking at comparables on Rightmove, put the property images and the sold prices. You always wanna look at sold properties within a quarter mile or on the street, only sold properties, not for sale. Okay, and that will be able to add in or act in as your supporting evidence um, in the interim to be able to help. Okay, um, but yes, uh, really good question, by the way, Imogen. Thank you very much. Um, 
Now, uh, I mean, that sort of brings us uh, to the end of everything I wanted to cover with you guys. We've had a few questions answered. Um, like I say, if you're catching this on the recording, please like, please share. If you're watching it, if you find what we do valuable, please like, please share. Get this out to your friends. I want to continue to get the stream to grow. Um, and I look forward to seeing many of you guys on the live three-day training this weekend where we're going to deep dive on how to be able to get you financially free. And you're going to do it absolutely for free uh, from the comfort of your own home. 10 till 4, all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, make sure you get yourself along. We won't be running these for free forever. Um, this is our um, trademark course that we typically run for 397. Uh, and we're doing it absolutely for free for you guys. So make sure you get yourselves along. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure to spend time with you guys. For those of you that wanted to catch us on the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube, I sound really old. Um, for those of you that wanted to catch us on YouTube, um, hopefully the upload is going to work for you guys. Unfortunately, it seems we're having issues with getting the stream set up. I hope you've all had an amazing session. You've had loads of value from where we're at. Uh, if you've had loads of value, do me a favor. Just give me a one in the chat box um, just so I know that you guys had lots of value with what we've done. Uh, and likewise, if you're catching this as a recording and you've had loads of value, please give us a one in the chat box. Allow the stream to continue to grow. Um, and without further ado, I suppose that brings us um, to the end of everything that I really wanted to cover. I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend the evening with you guys, and I look forward to hopefully seeing many of you guys on the three-day training uh, or in the future when you're catching any of the other streams. Um, please make sure you bring your questions along. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you for your time, guys. It has been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to seeing you all very soon, and hope you have a good night. Bye. <laughs>